Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. I'm Martha Messenger. We are back with another video. Um, this is probably going to be one of my best videos. Nothing but gems, nothing but wisdom for the man Jesus Christ. And um, I want to share with you guys everything. Now, I, not everything because I can't fit it in the whiteboard, but these are one of the most important teachings of Jesus Christ. And I feel like this video is very important because it reminds me of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. It says, um, therefore, whoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken him as unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Okay, so when you do these sayings, when you do his teachings, okay, you're gonna be built on a, on a rock, which means that when the storm comes, the trial and tribulations come, uh, anything comes, you're gonna be your foundation is gonna be firm because it's on Christ. Okay, but this talks about the foolish guy in the next verses, 26, 27. It says, and everyone that hears these sayings of mine and do them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and the great was a fall of it. Okay, and the, and it came to pass when Jesus had said these sayings, the people were astonished at his, at his doctrine, for he taught them as as one having the authority, not as the scribes. Okay, the scribes were just the Pharisees were just. They didn't they were on Jesus' level. Let's keep it real. Okay, so let's get it. Let's go. Man, number one. Number one, guys, is you must be born again. Now, this is not an order, but I feel like this is a good one, man. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. No man can see the kingdom of God unless he be born again. Marvel not that you must be born again. Okay, so I can speak this from my experiences too. Um, you know, me being getting baptized, guys, I started becoming, it's all levels to it. Just like a baby, when a baby's learning to walk, it got to crawl first. So in the beginning stages, like I started having the, the word dwell within my heart. Uh, now, I didn't know everything, but as I started to grow, you know, even the Bible says as uh, sincere babes grow, um, grow with the word of God. So, you know, as, the, as a baby has to have milk by the mother, we must have the word of God continuously reading it so we can be fed by it too. And so it was all just like the beginning stages and me being born again and me being, becoming spiritual. And that much is, that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay, so you must be born again. That's one of the uh, things that Jesus says. Number two is no man could go to God, but first to Jesus. Okay, a lot of people like want to go to Allah. They want to go to Buddha. They want to go to Prophet Muhammad. They want to go to all these other people, right? But Jesus says that no man could go to him. But for no man could go, sorry, no man could go to God, but first to Jesus, which is why it's important to prioritize your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't go to God. A lot of people they, they glorify God, but they don't glorify Jesus. How could you, you know? I, Jesus didn't come to be worshipped. But what I mean by that is they they talk about God, God, but never Jesus. But how can you go to God without Jesus? Okay, so this is one thing that I really hit me within my heart, and I didn't put put this here, but I'm gonna say this right now is that no man can serve two masters. I didn't have enough space. I have, this video is going to be probably a long video. No man can serve two masters, okay? You either love the one or hate the other, okay? A lot of people, you, you can't, you can't. You got to just pick a side, guys. Even the Bible says don't be lukewarm. You got to pick a side, okay? Number three is he who, um, I put who he says are blessed. So this is who Jesus says that are blessed, okay? This is in Matthew. Uh, I love this chapter, guys. Matthew chapter five. I used to always meditate on this back in the days. I mean, I still do, but... Okay, so Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12. Man, I wish I was on a live stream right now, guys, so I could be interacting with you guys. But Okay, so it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, okay, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So you humble people, according to Jesus, you're going to inherit the earth. The people who are arrogant, prideful, God resists those people, but he gives grace to the humble. Okay, uh, verse six, it says that blessed are they who, who which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. A lot of people in the comments, a lot of people emailing me, DMing me, you know, Mark, you know, I fell short. Mark, you know, I started doing this. I started doing that again. You know, pray for me. You know, I'm trying my best. The Bible says that blessed are those who, who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So in due time, you're going to be filled. Okay, just like me, there's a lot of times where I struggle. Well, you know, I was like, God, you know, help me, help me. And I was striving for righteousness. And in due time, I was filled. I was filled with the spirit. Okay, so to not to not feed my flesh. So best believe you guys who would email me, DM me, all that right, comment. Uh, I might not reply back to you, but I'm definitely praying for y'all, man. I'm definitely praying for y'all. So just understand that you will be filled. Continue to thirst and hunger after righteousness. Okay, number seven is blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Okay. We want God to forgive us for our sins, our wrongdoing. So be merciful upon, upon others. When other people wrong you for you know, other people do you wrong, stuff like that, right? 
you know, be merciful. Okay, the Bible, Jesus says those, those people are blessed. Okay, you will obtain mercy from God. Okay, number verse 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, okay? Uh, and verse 9, which is linked to, you know, being humility, you know, having humility. Number 9 is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, okay? The people, who, we're in the time of age where the love of many is waxing cold, where, you know, people want to sow strife, sow division, uh, hate, you know, slander and all that. But the Bible says that the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So you don't want to entertain in that type of uh, negativity. Uh, ver verse 10 says, blessed are they which are prosecuted for righteousness sake, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, you have a lot of people, we have family members, friends, um, whatever the case may be, right? Our loved ones prosecuting us for our righteousness for because we were denying ourselves, picking up our cross. The Bible says that for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now check this, it says uh, verse 11 to 12, so blessed are you when man shall revive you and prosecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they prosecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay, so understand the prophets of the old, they went through the prosecution that all of you guys are facing now. Okay, they were prosecuted because all they were because they, because God called them to do a, a big purpose and they were abiding in the light and the darkness, those who were of the dark, those who still were bound to Satan's kingdom. They hated it, which is many people. Many people of this earth, guys, Satan has them. You know, the God of this world has blinded the minds who believe not. Okay, people are like, no more, don't call Satan a God. Well, that's what the Bible says. The God of this world was a Satan. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, he's not my God, you know, but that's, many people worship him. Many people bow down to him, sell their souls, these celebrities and all that. Not all of them, but, you know, all the high-ranking celebrities, that's who their God is. Satan is their God, okay? He worships them. Just like how God could, the most high God could bless you, the devil could, you know, which I believe that his blessings, it, it, it's not just what I believe, it's a curse. It's all just a curse, okay? So that's what for number three. Uh, number four is to love each other, man. I feel like out of everything Jesus says, guys, it all correlates, it all goes hand in hand with love, having love for each other. And this is what Jesus said about love, okay? This is in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. I mean, there's many things, but this is what really sticks out with me when it comes to love. It says, and a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye may also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We see a lot of people being holier than thou, having no love for the brother. Always trying to put someone down. Always trying to tear someone down. Always trying to sow discord among the brethren, okay? Um, we know that those people aren't disciples of Christ. No matter how holier, we, we could look past the spiritual discernment that the Most High God blesses with. We could look past the holier than thou. We could look past the religious spirit. We could look past the deception, okay? If you have no love, you're not a true disciple. Okay, uh, Matthew, this is one of my favorite things Jesus says. Now, I have a lot of things. I always say that, but I feel like this is something that, like I said, it all what, what Jesus' teachings, it all correlates with love. Now, I know they're using this word love to justify sin, to, um, you know, be disobedient. That's not, when Jesus preached love, it wasn't about that, man. So, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 to 40. Okay, it says, Master. Some guy came up to him and said, Master, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Okay. You know, a lot of people say the law is done away with, but this is what Jesus says, okay? It says, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Many people say the law is done away with. So let's, let's see what Jesus says, okay? Uh, let, let God be true and every man a liar. So let's see what the Bible says. It says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as I love thyself. One of these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets, Okay? So people tell you the law is done away with, but I just see Jesus says the opposite. Okay, so that's why, guys, you must read the Bible for yourself. Don't wait on a pastor. Don't wait on a YouTuber. Don't wait on anybody else. You read it for yourself, okay? And just like I said in the beginning of this video, Jesus was telling people how um, you want to be built upon a rock to do his sayings, to do his teachings. So, and like I said, nowadays, guys, you don't really, even the Bible says this is how we know in the last days. The love of many is waxing cold. Okay, the love of many is waxing cold. A lot of people have no love for their brother. They don't have no love for their neighbor. You see, the, the neighbors in need of money or whatever homeless person, they just look, you know, look at that and just, and they have money in their pockets, just keep on walking. Guys, you don't want to do that, man. You want to show love. Show love. Have love for your brother, uh, your sister. Even if you guys don't have, you don't see eye to eye, you don't have to hate them. You don't have to condemn them, guys. You don't got to be like that. That's what many people are doing in these last days. You don't want to operate in that type of spirit, man. You want to operate in the spirit of love, the spirit of meekness, okay? Number five is deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. The Bible says that um, this is in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse uh, 23 to 24. It says that 
And, if, and he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whoever shall lose his, his life for my name's sake, the same shall save it. And I'm going to go over that ver the second verse in the next one. But Jesus says if you want to follow him, okay, he says you got to deny yourself and to pick up your cross daily. Okay, so you must crucify this flesh daily, every single day. Okay, even the Bible says to put away the old man, which is full of deceitful lusts, and put and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay, so best believe it, guys. This is this is a true and what does it being a Christian mean, guys? Being a Christian is being a follower of Christ. Okay, that's what it is. This is being a true Christian, denying yourself daily and taking up your cross and following him. Okay. Number six is to seek the kingdom of God first. Okay. Seek the, this is one of the most important. I mean, guys, all this is important. I always, <laughs> but you got to be seeking God's kingdom first, man. Blessings on blessings. Woo! <laughs> right, you just, it's all joy, the fruit of the spirit. Now, I was going to put the fruit of the spirit, but that's in Galatians. Um, I want to keep it with what Jesus was saying. But, that, you know, that's, that's still a good saying, too. But seeking God's kingdom first. Don't, guys, what does this mean? Don't seek, your, don't seek after your own pleasures. Don't seek after, um, uh, material stuff, worldly stuff, um, vain stuff, uh, money, all that type of stuff, right? You got to be seeking God's kingdom first. And it takes time. It takes seasons. You got to keep on growing, okay? As you start to seek God's kingdom first all, and his righteousness, all things will be added into you in due time. Your, your godly husband, your godly wife, uh, you want children or children, you know, whatever the case may be. So always consider that, guys, to seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. Okay, number seven. Uh, I like this one, guys. I like this one a lot. This is the. This, I was laughing when I read this verse, guys. I think this is in Luke chapter eighteen. Uh, I was laughing when I read this verse, guys. This is hilarious. So it says that he who humbles himself will be. Uh, he who humbles himself will be exalted, and he who exalt exalt himself will be humbled. So this is a, a, a hilarious one. Hopefully, I can find this in Luke chapter eighteen, and it says, um, "Oh yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, I got it. I got it." All right, this is in Luke, yeah, Luke chapter 18. Guys, I'm telling you, when I read this, when I read this uh, chapter, or this verse in particular, I started to laugh because it's so true. Okay, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Okay, it says, And he spake this parable into, into certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. A lot of people, guys, today, they, they, they trust and believe that they're righteous, but they despise their brother, they despise their neighbor, despise their sister. Check this out what Jesus says, right? And he spoke into this parable, which certain, which was certain, was trusted in himself that they were righteous and despised each other. Okay, or sorry, despised others. Two men went up to, into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Okay, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with, with himself: God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men are, exterminators, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give uh, titles of all that I possess. And the publicans standing afar off would not so lift up his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalt himself shall be abased, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Okay, so you see the Pharisee, right? He was like, God, thank God I'm not like that, like that sinner. Okay, I, I thank God I'm not like this adulterer, uh, this um, this sinner, right? Thank God, and, and see, the sinner was like, God, you know, please forgive me, uh, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner, you know. Help me. He could even look up to the sky. He was he was humble. Okay, and God gave him honor more than the Pharisee was like, well, thank God, God, I'm not like this guy, or I'm like that, like that sinner, or that sinner. Thank God I ain't like them. Thank God I'm righteous. He was trusting in his own righteous, not knowing that being humble is righteous, not being arrogant. So, so you see, it says, and I tell you, this, the, 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 the sinner, and this sinner went down to his house justified rather than the Pharisee. For everyone who exalt himself shall be abased, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Wow. I'm telling you guys, I was cracking up when I read that, man. I was cracking up. I was cracking up. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. Number eight. When you fast and pray, do it in secret. You have a whole bunch of people, guys. Telling other people, oh, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. And I'm not here to condemn them. I'm just telling you guys what the Bible says. Okay, The Bible says that when you when you fast, Jesus says this, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites who fast to be seen by other people because that's their reward. Oh, he's fasting, he's righteous. Oh, he's fasting. Oh, I, I want to be like him. Okay, the Bible says when you fast in private, God rewards you openly. 
Okay, other people are gonna see the glow. They're gonna they're gonna see it. Okay, and also, uh, also maybe God could bless you with whatever whatever case of blessings you want. Okay, because best believe fasting that doesn't work. That is a work of faith, which is you know obedience. Now, of course, there are people who fast for other reasons. Okay, uh, but if you're fasting for God, fasting for you know to deny yourself and to fill up your spirit, best believe God will bless you guys. Okay, and it also says that when you pray too, we see a lot of people praying in public. Okay, now I'm not here that because I'm not here to condemn people who do that. Praying on a YouTube video, I'm not here to do that. But Jesus says that when you pray, don't be as the hypocrites who pray to be seen by others. When you pray, you're supposed to do it in secret. When people ask me for prayers, I, I trust me, guys. I'm doing it. I might not be telling you, but I'm praying in secret. I had a sister who said, Mark, you know, I think you've been praying for me because, you know, she she's I think she's on day four, day five. Shout out to Rhonda. Day four, day five uh, without smoking. And I've been praying for this sister. And I keep going. Keep going. Okay, so always understand that. When you pray and fast, guys, you must do it in secret. That's in Matthew chapter 6. That's in Matthew chapter 6. Like I said, guys, I'm not here to condemn people who do that. I'm just letting you guys know what you just said, okay? Number nine is, if you try saving your life, you will lose it. If you try saving your life, guys, you will lose it. The same will lose it, okay? Always understand that. So that's how I was reading in, um, in uh, I was just reading that earlier, talking about how when you have to deny yourself. And he who, who he loses his life will find it. I lost my life. I, guys, I lost all my, guys, I'm telling you, I lost all my friends, family members. Uh, I was lonely for like over a year, guys. I lost everything. Everything I gained in the world, in the world, I lost, okay? But years down later, I found it. I found what God, my purpose, okay? I found what God wants me to do in my life. And now I found it, bro. Blessings, man. I had a bad, but in order to get that, I had to lose my life, okay? I had to no longer live for the lust of man, the lust of the flesh, and walk in the spirit. So yeah, all praise, all praise the most high for that, man, for real. Number 10 is Jesus said to go out and make disciples. Okay, let's read that verse real quick. This is in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, I think. Yeah, verse 19. Okay, so it says, um, um, Jesus said that he'll make you fish. Now, this is not that verse I'm saying, but Jesus said he'll make you fi a fisherman and men. Okay, he wants you to, so it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am all, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Okay, that's not the verse I was looking for. But um, it, it says to, you know, go make disciples. Go, go make. Okay, let me try to find that verse for you guys. I mean, that that is that is a, that is a verse, you know. Go thee therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them. In the, the name of the Father and the, and the Son. Okay, Jesus even said that he will make us fishermen and men. Okay, uh, number eleven is pray always, and so you won't so you won't fall into temptation. Okay, uh, Jesus said told um, when Jesus was about to be about to be killed, he told them uh, Peter and then they fell asleep. He said always be praying because when you're praying more, you won't be falling into temptations. You're too busy praying. That's why I told you guys on semer attention no fab. And when you're praying, um, you don't want to uh, when. Um, when you fall into temptation, you got to be praying more. So you won't be thinking about those thoughts, all those, those thoughts in your mind. And, you know, pray for God to deliver you from those strongholds, the demonic strongholds, or whatever spirits you're battling with. You know, so always be praying. Number two is repent. One of the first things Jesus says, guys, in Matthew chapter three is repent. The, the, repent for the kingdom of heaven is heaven. That's one of the first things he said. Okay, repent, 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 repent of your sins. He even said, uh, likewise, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Okay, so that's one of the things Jesus said. Number three is, if you, if you love me, I put him. But yeah, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, keep the commandments. Now, what's the uh, Ten Commandments of God? Let's go read that. Let's go read that. Yeah, Jesus also said that he who does and teaches the commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever teaches other people to break it will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So let, let's see what the Ten Commandments are, guys. I'm going to read it for you. Number one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two is, thou shalt not make thee a graven image. Number three is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number four is, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Number five is, honor thy father and thy mother. Number six is, thou shalt not kill. Number seven is, thou shalt not commit no adultery. Number eight is, thou shalt not steal. Number nine is, thou shalt not bear false witness. And number 10 is, thou shalt not convict. Okay, thou shalt not convict. So those are the 10 commandments of God. All right, number... Um, 14 is bad tree and a good tree. People ask me, Mark, is this guy a false prophet? Is this guy a false teacher? Can you tell me about this guy? Well, 
guys, you got to stop relying on men and be start, we got to start relying on the Holy Spirit, okay? The Bible says that, you know, a tree by its fruits. A good tree can't bear bad fruit, and, and, a, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit, okay? By their fruits, you shall know them. You can't GMO, you can't GMO, you, you can't GMO, I mean, so you could GMO an apple, you, you could GMO this, which I'm going to throw away soon because it's rotten, <laughs> okay, you can, and this is, the, these fakes, they're rotten inside, inside they're rotten, okay, you could GMO these fruits, but you can't GMO a man's fruits, okay, you'll know a, you'll know a tree by its fruits, all right, so uh, number 15 is enter into the straight gate, ooh, Jesus said to enter into the straight gate, because um, someone said that, someone said that to Jesus, right? He said, "Master, Master, uh, are they few that be saved?" He said that uh, enter into the straight gate. Let me uh, read this first. I don't want to say this. I uh, say this wrong. Uh, it's Luke chapter nine, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. It says, um, "Oh no, that's not the verse. It's so, my fault." Luke chapter thirteen, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. All right, let's check this out. So it says. And then said unto him, Lord, are there a few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter into the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Okay, it also says that, that there's a broad, wide gate, which leads to destruction, and many enter in. Why do many people enter into that gate, which leads to destruction, guys? Because they don't want to obey the commandments of Christ or the commandments of God. They don't want to obey Christ's teachings. They want to be that house that's been upon a sand. Okay, they want to be in love with this world. Being in love with this world, guys, is like spiritual, po it's like poison for your spirit, okay? Especially with your walk with Christ, okay? That's what it, really what it comes down to. So, number 16 is to abide in Christ. Okay, John chapter 15, verse 4 says that, um, this is one of the good teachings I learned from Christ too as well. It's, uh, abide in me, it was Jesus speaking, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide be Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Okay, so we need to have Christ in us, the spirit of Christ. All right, no man can, no, um, wh whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Okay, so you want to have Christ abide in you so you can bear much fruit. All right, and number 17 is to forgive others. Jesus taught people to forgive others. Why? So we could obtain, and sometimes, so we could obtain forgiveness from God. But, and when you have Christ in you guys, you forgive other people, even though they wronged you, even though you, you don't even have to, you don't, you know what I mean? You don't have to forgive them, but you have Christ inside you and he said to forgive. So, all right, man, I keep it moving, keep it pushing. Okay. So, and sometimes guys, when you forgive, sometimes it's not for them. It could be for you. So you don't have that grudge in your heart. So you don't have that burden in you. You could just let go. You know, you don't want to be holding on to any grudges with anybody, guys. If you have watched this video, you have a grudge towards someone, uh, maybe like a friend who did you wrong, um, or like a, like a boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband. Uh, just remove it. Just remove it, guys. Forgive them and just be free. Be free. Because when you have a grudge in your heart, you're like a bird that's in this cage that can't fly. You just can't fly. You're stuck. And then many of you truly forgive them with all your heart, you know, and know, you, know, you really forgive them. It's just, all right, you're going to level up, lies. You're going to feel peace. I'm telling you, man. I'm taking this from experience, too, as well. So, uh, number 18 is don't get to be seen, okay? A lot of people, guys, they're on, they're on Instagram, you know, giving to the homeless. They're giving it to the, you know, hey, you know, I gave to you. Hey, what's up? And the Bible, Jesus says that they that they already received their reward. What's the reward? Other people seeing them. Oh, he, he, oh, he gave out money to the homeless. Oh, I have more respect. I have respect for him. Okay, you want to have respect for God, not for there's a lot of there's a lot of things I do in, I do in private, but I'm not looking for clout. I'm not looking for man's approval because these are the same people who will praise you today and cast a stone at you tomorrow. So you should always be living for God. You should always be trying to please God, seek God. Don't be trying to please and seek a world's approval. So when you give to people, guys, don't do it to be seen by other people, guys. You know. So yeah, man. Just uh, and the Bible even says that when you give in private, God will bless you too. So yeah, number nineteen. Is his teaching a rock? I said that verse in the beginning. I want to say that before I start this video because I want to let you guys know how important it is to hear Christ in the message. So, yeah. So, um, his teaching will be a rock. Number 20 is lead, let the blind leaders alone. The blind, if the Bible, Jesus says that the blind lead the blind, all fall into a ditch, all fall into a pit. Okay. So, always understand that when you, when someone's blind, just let them go. Just let them go there. Because if you follow people who are blind, who, who don't know where they're going, you're going to go along, you're going to fall with them. They don't know where they're going. You following them, you're going to go along with them. So always make sure 
You're watching someone who's obeying God, watching someone who has Jesus in their life, has the spirit of Christ in them. Okay. Number 20. Oh, sorry. Number 21 is to have faith in God. That's kind of simple. Having faith in God. Number 22 is go to preach to all nations. I read that talked about in, um, in Matthew and, uh, yeah. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so I had to turn off the video because they were doing some loud construction work randomly and uh, they stopped doing it, so we back. But yeah, so I was at number 23. Uh, Jesus says to do good to those who hate you and pray for those people who use you. Pray for your enemies. That's what Jesus said, okay? Uh, I know this might be hard for a lot of us to do, especially depending on what they did to you, but that's just the teaching of Jesus, to pray for those who hate you so you may, uh, and uh, those who use you. Pray for your enemies so you may be children of your Father, which is in heaven. Okay, number 24 is don't do the works of a Pharisee. Okay, um, Jesus tells us about the Pharisees in the whole chapter. I think it's in Matthew chapter 23. And Jesus actually tells us to, live, you know, he actually, let me get to give you guys this verse in Matthew chapter 23. So uh, who were the Pharisees? The Pharisees were the teachers of the law. Okay, and uh, Matthew chapter 23, um, verse 1 to 3 says, then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that you observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Okay? Do not. So the, even Jesus says that, uh, observe. Um, it says that whatsoever they bide you to observe, and that, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. They were hypocrites. That's what the Pharisees were. They preached this, they preached that, but they don't even practice what they preach. Okay, they were hypocrites. They had no love. They claimed to, they claimed to keep the law, you know, they, but they had no love for their brother, no love for their sisters, no love for their neighbor. They were hypocrites. Okay, so don't do the works of a Pharisee. Number five, or sorry, number 25 is judge righteous judgment. Okay, um, what is judging righteous judgment? Okay, let's say for instance, right? Let's say you're about to get in a relationship with a man or a female, right? Or like a friendship. And we want to judge righteous judgment. We want to test their spirit. We want to see, judge their fruits, whatever fruits they're bearing, to see that, okay, this woman's supposed to be in my life or this man's supposed to be in my life. Like, So that's a judge righteous judgment. Not to judge to put them down. Not to judge to cast a stone or to feel like we're better than them, but to judge righteous judgment. That is judging righteously, okay? Number 26 says, judge not least ye be judge, okay? A lot of people like to use this verse, uh, to justify them being in error. But it is true, though, when you put yourself in a position to judge other people openly with your mouth, best believe that it's, you're going to be judged by God, okay? That's why I choose not to, to openly judge someone. Now, I might judge someone righteously in my mind. Okay, like, oh, okay, he ain't right. You know, I could just tell he ain't right, so I'm going to keep it moving. But to, to, to go out my way to judge that person to cast a stone, best believe when you judge other people, guys, you're going to be judged by God's trigger. So that's why I choose not to, you know, I let God deal with people. Okay, gotta let God people deal with people. Okay, number uh, twenty-seven. Uh, Jesus teaches us how to fear. Who? Who, uh, who? Sorry, how to fear. Jesus tells us who to fear. Okay, Jesus says, "Don't fear the man who could kill your body." Okay, he could kill you, know, shoot you, whatever, right? Stab you, whatever, right? But he says, "Fear the man who could, who can not only kill you but can send your soul to hell," and that's God. Okay, so Jesus tells us who to fear. Okay, number twenty-eight. Uh, to be harmless as a doe. Jesus told us, you know, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be there harmless as do uh be there harmless as does doves and wise as serpents. Okay. So when people attack us, when people falsely accuse us, when people lie to us, hurt us, slander, all that type of stuff, right? We be harmless. Okay. Now sometimes guys, we could fall, we could fall into that snare of going back and forth with someone, but we instantly gotta correct yourself and be like, all right, I ain't you know, just keep walking, keep it pushing, keep it moving. Be be harmless as those, man. Number 29. It's a be ready for the second coming of Christ. Here he goes. Here he goes, guys. Woo! It's coming. Okay, be, Jesus tells you guys to be, you know, be prepared. Be ready for, he's coming as a thief uh, uh, the night. He even talked, he gave people a parable of the five wise versions and the five foolish ones. Okay, the foolish ones, they weren't prepared. And they missed out on the wedding. They missed out on the bride's, bride's groom. Okay, so... Be prepared for the second coming of Christ. I know people will be like, well, Mark, they've been saying that for a thousand years, hundred years. Well, I'm going to keep on saying it. <laughs> I'm going to keep on saying it. All right. So number 30 is to be content with your wages. Okay. Luke chapter 13, or sorry, Luke chapter three. Let me give you guys this word real quick. Luke chapter three, verse 14 
says, and the soldiers, oh, sorry, and the soldiers likewise demanded him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. So do violence to no man, and neither accuse anybody falsely, and be content with your wages. When you're not content with your wages, guys, it leads to convenience, uh, to be convent, to convent more and more and more. Even the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So be content with what you have, whether you have a lot or whether you have little. Okay, always be content. All right, because if you're not content, that leads to breaking the commandment, which is, you know, thou shalt not commit wanting more, even though God has already blessed you with, uh, with whatever you have. Okay, uh, number 31, Jesus says to ask and ye shall re receive and seek and ye shall find. Okay, uh, for every man who asks, it shall be given to him. Okay, and whatever, whoever seeks shall find. Okay, so if you're... And this is why it says, seek the kingdom of God. Seek, and it should be given to you. So what did God, Jesus say? To seek the kingdom of God. Okay, seek the kingdom of God. And ask, and you shall receive. Whatever you want that's linked to God's will in your life, it will be given to you. All right? Um, number 32 is be perfect. Okay? Now, are we going to be without sin? Or are we going to be, you know, um, are we going to be sinless? No. But what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, 40, ver, Jesus chapter 5, verse 48, says, be perfect as your heavenly father and heaven is perfect. Okay, God called Job a perfect man. I'm pretty sure it was other people. I think Abraham was called perfect too, and other people were called perfect. Okay, so were they without sin? Absolutely not. But they were striving to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. They were striving to. They had faith. Most importantly, they had faith. Okay, Abraham was tested by by his faith. All right, and um, number thirty three is wise as a, as a serpent. And I could keep on going on, guys, because I mean, there's so. I mean. There's so many chapters, so many verses that could go on, but these are the things that came in my mind, came in my heart, which helped me as lot. And I hope you guys could really observe this uh, word and apply it to your life. Because remember, the Bible says that when you apply his teachings, his words into your life, you're going to be built upon a rock. So no matter what happens in life, you're going to be firm. Your foundation is built on Christ. So that's what it's all about, guys. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video if you haven't. And if you wish to support me, my links are down below in the description. I love you guys so much. I am out. Peace.